Conversation are the results of interaction between two entities, the chatbot and the user. A good chatbot can answer user questions, but also knows how to, to ask for the right questions. So let's go over what kind of question we can ask to the users, what data we can get through this conversation and what we can do with it. In this behavior, we welcome the user through our start interaction containing a simple welcome message. And then we go to ask his name in the next interaction. So we use a text action saying, I need to know you better, what's your name? After which we use a text input action that allows us to acquire generic information. Here I'm using a generic input action because the name of the user can be written in different ways. It can be one word, two words, so we don't have much control about it. How can you add it? Go here in the cog icon, add an action and through the input tab you can use and see different actions. The generic input is the one I used in this case to get the user's name. But there are many others. As you can see we can use specific actions to get for example email addresses, numeric values, phone numbers, media attachments, so video, audio, images. Let's move on. In this interaction, we're asking how many people are you booking for? Then we use a number input. This action is very detailed. It allows us to specify, for example, the minimum value, the maximum value, so we can control the value we are receiving. It has to be a number between 1 and 6. In addition to this, we can ignore extra text in the response, which is very powerful. So if I ask the user how many people, he might say we are six. So we are six. The power of Xenio is that it can ignore the words we are and just consider the number six, which is the data we need. Then we are going to save a variable as seen in the previous video and we can set the reply in case of invalid data from the user. Something like, uh, sorry, we only accept reservation for one to six people because of the coronavirus. Try again and write cancel, a nulla in Italian to finish. Why this? Because we also give the chance to the user to avoid a question, never using an intent, so we talk about natural language recognition, or using a text, a keyword, an expression that allows the user to exit from this action. After that, the flow proceeds by asking in the interaction, ask phone, chiedi telefono in Italian. We can go and ask for a phone number, but through what? With the specific action to collect the phone number. So by itself, this action will go to do a series of checks to verify that we are getting a valid phone number. Again, here we will be able to set up different ways to answer, words to exit from the question and so on. After getting a formally valid phone number, Xenio checks if the conversation is on the Telegram channel. If no, which we'll now verify because we'll test this flow in the web channel, we return the reservation data to the user inside each variable. So I go to the website, open the chatbot and type in book, prenota in Italian. It asks me how many people I say we should be um, Wait, I show you something even cooler now. I'm gonna click on the mic icon and talk to my chatbot. I think we might be six people. Un recapito telefonico. Now I click on the mic icon again and answer. 393 309 Prenotazione effettuata, a presto, nominativo, prenota, numero persone, 6, telefono, 3 miliardi 933 milioni 94 646. As you have heard, the web chatbot allows users to interact simply by speaking and responding thanks to the use of a speech synthesizer.
It is one of the many hidden gems inside Xenio. Now let's go back to our behavior. What would happen if we were on Telegram channel instead of the web channel? If I write here, for example, make a reservation, which is prenota in Italian, the chatbot asks for my name, so I answer Luciano. How many people? I think four people at the most. And look, I'm not getting any error here. Xenio understand the number four and store that inside its variable. Phone number, we give them, we give a number, 393 blah, 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 blah. And we send the number and now the flow changes because we are on Telegram. The chatbot tells me needs the permission to know where is the location, where I am. So I go on it asks me for the location, I click on send location. So Telegram wants to make sure that I agree to the sharing this kind of data. And here's a map of where I am now. If I click on it, we see that the location I mean is provided. You can really ask and get a lot of information. Now we'll do something more. We can, for example, validate the location, checking its coordinates, uh, longitude and altitude. So we can understand if our restaurant delivers or not to that address. We will use two variable switch actions to do that. The first one for the user latitude, then the second one for the user longitude. They are both result of the previous user location action. Not bad, Drew. If one or both of them will be false, the chatbot refuse the order. Otherwise, it will accept the order saying, great, we delivered there. Let's try sending our position again with this map expression. So I send my location and bam, perfect. We deliver to you. That's because now my Wi-Fi worked better. This time the network found me much closer to the location of my office where I am now. So the coordinates of its location are inside those set for home delivery. Time for recap now. We have seen how we can ask a lot of things to our users like uh, email address, numbers, phone numbers, video, audio and so on. We can talk to the chatbot that responds with its own voice, incredible. Lastly, we can also go on and ask for the user's location and check his coordinates. We'll see in the next video how to work with extended content. So far we have handled question, answer, question, answer. Now we are going to see and talk about carousel and why not even dynamic carousel.